All right, I'm letting them in. Good morning. Good morning. There's a lot of people worrying right. about their salary. Isn't it? Right. All right, we're going to give everybody just a couple more minutes and then uh, we'll get going. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. If somebody, do y'all have access to add people? Somebody on my team? We yeah. do. Great. Thank you. If y'all can just keep track of that, that would be great. All right, so thank you all for joining us today um, on such short notice. Uh, I know we've got a lot of questions and confusion that I think we can address pretty quickly and, and not keep y'all too long on a Friday morning. Um, Leanne from Elbow and her team are on this call as well to help if we have any questions that I can't answer. Um, but I don't want to keep you too long on a Friday morning, so we're going to just dive in and uh, answer any questions we can for you about this. 
and uh, I'm gonna run through it and then open it up for questions. All right. So yesterday or this morning, hopefully you have received your salary information from your analyst. Um, if not, you know, the, the email asked, let me know um, and we will get that to you. So each agency, it shouldn't say statement of request, sorry, but each agency received the following salary information from the legislative budget office. So total salary number, a progression number, and a vacancy number. In addition, each agency received, or some agencies that they have a border commission received per diem money, and in some instances they received overtime money. But every agency is on the list, should have gotten at least the top three, some got the bottom two as well. All right, we're gonna talk about each one of these individually. So total salary, just like this current fiscal year for FY23, the total salary number is the maximum authorized amount for your agency for fiscal year 2024. It includes everything else. It includes fringe. It includes vacancy numbers. It includes per diems. It includes progressions, overtime. Anything paid under salaries, wages, and fringes cannot exceed your total salary amount for the fiscal year. Um, at no point can you exceed this without elbow intervention on the monthly or year-to-date compliance report. All right, so that, that the total total is your maximum. All right. In addition, each agency was provided progression money. This money was authorized and appropriated by the legislature for you to make salary progressions. This money is included in your total salary amount. It is not the maximum you can spend on progressions for fiscal year 2024. And it was provided to help you continue to progress your employees through the pay grades as you see fit as you need to okay so they provided you a dollar amount of x for progressions that doesn't mean that's the all you can spend on progressions it just means that money was specifically appropriated for that so you still have the ability to do more than the amount given so long as it stays within your total salary number if you know you have a staff And somebody muted you. All right, please don't mute all because that mutes me too. Thank you. All right, so I don't know where I got muted. All right, so that doesn't mean you can't use more than the money provided for prog progressions for progressions. It just means that that money was provided to help with the progressions. And so, again, you still have the ability to do more than 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%. You can do up to the full 10 so long as it was within your total salary number. This money was just given as extra progression money. Okay, you can still, if somebody leaves and you want to divvy that money up amongst your staff and not fill a position, that's totally within your ability to do. This is just money that was provided as a separate category within the total salary for salary progressions. All right. Vacancies. This is a new category. Um, this money was specifically authorized to fill headcount and it's not necessarily for new positions. I talked to several people who said, well, I didn't ask for any new positions. And so the, I don't know why I got vacancy money. This money is available to increase your headcount beyond what it was on May 31st up to your authorized headcount. So just because you didn't get anything new this year, this is if like in personnel board's case, we'll talk about us in a minute, but we have 40 head count. Our authorized is 45. And so in order to access this money, we would have to go above 40 in order to use it. Okay, this is to increase your head count, but not necessarily for new positions. It's also including your total salary. And that's that's it for the vacancy amount. This is the new language that's in each agency's appropriation bill saying the money was specifically provided for the increase in headcount. It cannot be used to give pay raises to people. All right, it's the intention of the legislature to increase your headcount with this money. All right. Additionally, if you have boards or commissions, um, you may have been provided per diem money for those boards to cover the expenses of the board. Um, 
It's not a maximum again. This is money that was set aside for that purpose, and it is included within your total salary amount. Overtime money was also provided. All right, this money was provided to cover FLSA overtime costs. Um, for those of you who, who spend a lot of money on it, again, it's not a maximum for how much you can spend on FLSA overtime. This is how much money you were appropriated for FLSA overtime, and it is included in your total salary amount. So all of the other categories are included within the total salary amount. All right. So example one, state personnel board. We used us. All right. Our total salary number for this year is $3,984,669. Within that, they gave us $250,000 for progressions and roughly $300,000 for vacancies. In order to utilize the $300,000 for vacancies, we would need to increase our headcount from the 40 employees we had on May 31st. So if we move to 41 or 42 up to our 45, we could then have access to that $297,000. If not, our real total salary for warm bodies at the 40 count is 3.687, which is the total salary less the vacancies. Okay. I'll do one more example and then we're going to open up for questions. Cho chose person, I did get permission to use them because they have money in every category. All right, they have a total salary, they have progressions, they have per diem, they were given 15,000 for overtime. So in order to use that 771,000 for vacancies, HERS would need to increase its headcount from 149 employees to above that. As it grows beyond, they would have access to some or all of that $771,000. If not, it stays at 149 throughout the whole year, their number is really 10-7, okay? Now we understand there's going to be churn, there's going to be turnover, um, especially for you bigger agencies to where you might hire 100 people and lose and lose 100 people in the same month. And so your net headcount hasn't changed. So just keep in mind, we're, we're going to be tracking this stuff, reporting to Elbow on if you're spending more money than on warm bodies that and your headcount's not increasing, we're going to be making sure that that money that's for vacancies is still sitting out there for you to to fill headcount. All right. So I'm gonna open it up for questions and stop sharing. All right. So what questions can me, Kelly, Elbow answer for you guys? What percent do you use for fringe? Um, for salary increases, we've been using, uh, I think it's 26.8, 27, something like that. Daniel can hop in here. Um, for a new higher fringe, I know it's closer to 40% now, um, but for, for salary increases, it's right at 26.8, 27%. I did see a hand raised, but I didn't see who raised their hand. So got two hands up. Glenda or Christy, you want to unmute and ask? Yeah. Did I go, Brian? Say it again. Brian at Wildlife. Hey, Brian at Wildlife. Hey, our question is that uh, if we term an employee that was making a set amount, let's say $40,000, if that employee terms and we hire an employee at $50,000, where does that difference come from? If you were to do that, that would come out of your total salary, number one, but your headcount hasn't changed, right? So okay. if, you, if you replace them, and for those of y'all who didn't hear, I had to cut my volume up pretty high, it was... If we have somebody leave at 40 and replace them at 50, uh, where does that money come from? So that would be your headcount hasn't changed. So the money for vacancies to, to increase headcount shouldn't be utilized for that. You should have that money from your total salary, but it, it, your, your vacancy number shouldn't change because your 
headcount hadn't changed. OK, thanks. OK, I'm going to try again. Is Christy, can you hear me? I can. OK, I just could you clarify the difference in the fringe calculation between a new hire and a increase? Because um, is what is it that we don't include when given a raise to that impacts compliance? So when you have a current employee that you're giving a pay raise to, you're already paying health insurance on them. You're already paying several fringes that you're going to continue to pay on a salary increase. So we're not going to, the, the, the cost of that is, is not the same as if you hire a brand new person, you're not paying any fringe on that person. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that helps. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Bobby Wicker, regarding the vacancy money, none is unlocked until we max out instead of a percentage release for every head. We no, that that's so we're gonna we're gonna Bobby, this is why you know we we talked with entirely with elbow. This is not gonna be a hard stop. It's gonna be if your head count goes up by one and you have half a million dollars in vacancy money, obviously the one head count going up is not gonna cost you half a million dollars. So we're gonna we're gonna be tracking that, monitoring that, making sure it's it's reasonable. Um, as your head count goes up, the vacancy money comes down. Um, it's not gonna it's not a release type thing though. It's it's your total salary is gonna be what's on the compliance report. But we are gonna be tracking and monitoring and reporting to Elbow. Um, how much uh, you're spending on that? Like in, in our example, you know, until we go above forty, our Compliance report should reflect that we still have three hundred thousand dollars available to spend. You know, it should still show that amount because we have an increased headcount. All right, Brandy. Uh, if we offer a new employee over the minimum salary, will that come out of the vacancy budget or progression budget? So it will come out of the vacancy budget just because you're increasing your headcount. Assuming your headcount is increasing without a new employee and you're not replacing someone. So again, if you lose somebody and you replace them, your headcount's not changing. Diane, thank you for that. I meant to mention that. So the headcounts are as of May 31st for the vacancy money. And so Daniel is pulling that this morning to have it ready to we'll push that out to you guys. Um, once we have it for every agency, what your headcount was on May 31st. On the compliance report, will these categories be tracked and displayed? They will not. Um, eventually they will be. We're still working on pulling good data from the system. So theoretically, I love Bobby. Bobby's my favorite person because he's not afraid to ask questions. I love Bobby. So theoretically, we could max out our headcount, spending all of our vacancy money, but then our headcount drops because of turnover. So yes, that's that that could in theory happen. Um, we don't have to give back vacancy money pulled out, right? So for the, we'll say the thing is, what's great about this new compliance report is it tracks actual payroll expenditures. So if you maxed out your headcount, added 15 people, and then five of them left, your compliance will come down. You, you see what I'm saying? Like your payroll will come down on the next compliance report because you didn't spend money on those people. So then that money will be back out there. Your headcount's still gone up, but it hasn't gone up as much as you would, as it was. Does that make sense, Bobby? Christy, I don't know why I'm typing this. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, this is a lot quicker to just say. I just well, just to be clear. So as your headcount goes up and down, that vacancy dollar it's amount close. will rise and fall. So the vacancy number stays alive even if it goes to zero. It could theoretically go back up as you lose people. Sure. So the way I would look at it is But it stays in the vacancy category, I guess is what I'm saying. 
Yes. I mean, and, okay. and, and you know, like I said, it's not going to be a hard stop. It's going to be very fluid this first year. So, but if you were to hire and max out and then lose a couple of them, you're not going to be paying them. And so that would be, then be reflected on how much money you are, have left to the good. Okay. And again, the, the whole point of this from the legislative standpoint, and they can jump in if, if I misspeak, is if you ask for more money to, to hire more people and they gave you more money to hire more people, they want you to use that money to hire more people. Gotcha. And so that, that's ultimately the goal with this it is it, agencies have been asking for more 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 warm bodies and they have given you money for more warm bodies they want you to spend that to hire more warm bodies makes sense all right i've got two hands up and i've got chat to catch up with let's do the hands up first because those are easier christy your hand is still up is, you have another question or is this well no i think i hit it twice oh. but i but i do have one question sure. so the, the the descriptions that you're going over today and and how this has all been categorized and that's going to be monitored has this detail been provided to the agency directors heads or it's it's just for us to let them know i, I haven't provided it to i don't i don't the personnel board has not provided it to agency heads no okay thank you but this, this like i said this recording will be available either later this afternoon or, or Monday that you could share with them. Okay. So my chat question was a, kind of along those lines is that um, if we don't hire any new people, then the only amount per, or the only dollar amount we could add as additional salaries to current employees is the amount in our progression? Yeah. No. No. The, the maximum you can use if you were to not add another employee the entire fiscal year would be your total salary less vacancies. The total salary less vacancies. Well, then yeah. that would only that would leave the difference being progression, right? Well, well, no, because progressions are built into your total salary. The progression amount is in your total salary. Okay. And the vacancies were looked at on May 31st. Yes. Did that include, I mean, I know there was, we were told not to delete any pins, but we, in order to meet the count in our appropriation bill, the difference between our time limited and permanent positions doesn't match what we really have. How mm -hmm. do we, reckon, how do we resolve that? Well, that shouldn't matter from a compliance standpoint because they're both going to cost you salaries, wages, and fringes. Right, but you know, can we're trying to take? We need more time limited positions than we have right now. The only other option is to convert some time limited positions into permanent positions. Mm -hmm. Is that that's okay to do? As you have the need to fill them, yes. If they're if if they're filled, then if your filled counts are greater for permanent or time limited than you were authorized, we probably need to take that offline and have a conversation about it. If it's just vacant position counts, we can swap those over whenever. OK, so we would handle those individually if something like that happens. Sure, if you need if you if you need to fill some positions and it's time limited now, but you don't have any more headcount authority and then make it permanent, we can have that conversation for sure. OK. Uh, Leanne wanted to hop in for a quick second, I think. And just yeah, tell your agency directors if they have questions. I've already talked to a few um, agency heads. If they have questions, most of them have my cell phone number or my email. So if they have any questions of what the legislature did and why they did what they did, just have them call me. Thank and you. this is, yeah, and this is Kelly. And from our plan, we had we were making sure that uh, HR understood and we were going to refer the agency head to you first um, and then you can but uh, as Leanne said you can you can they can contact either one of us and we'll explain it to them. Thank you. Also as some of y'all know this last year we have had to make some changes to this reconciliation during the year 
we are fully aware that this is a work in progress. Um, we actually have one agency now that may be on here that their their vacancy number is way, way too high. Um, but I can't get it changed until we run a payroll in July. So not that we're going to do wholesale changes to everybody, but know that if we have made a mistake in some of these numbers, we will work with you on getting that. We just have to get sign off from the two chairmen. Um, and we've had some trouble getting a hold uh, of them since, you know, it is election time. But we will we will work through this. Don't feel like you we they are not trying to hamstring you completely. They are just we had some bad apples over the last year with those vacancies and the and the what they've been telling us during session is one thing and then they were using it for something else. So that is that is why this has happened this year. So I've got hands up. I think Terrence, you were next. A quick question. So this vacancy number, will we be able to monitor it during the year anywhere? So is this a report I can pull out of BC? What <laughs> you guys provide? Man, come on, man. Um, uh, <laughs> no i'll take that as a no so we're gonna do our best once we feel good with us pulling good information we will start publishing it we're okay. still not sure what that's going to look like yet okay um we, we, we've got some ideas where we're, we we know we can pull it and track it we just don't know how well it's going to pull out of ec in a way we can publish it, if that makes sense. Um, so we're still working through that. All right, appreciate it. Real Estate Commission has their hand up and a question in chat. Um, so our preparation bill, we were not provided new pins, but our vacancy amount is three times as much as our progression. So where do we use this? Where do we use this money? So Real Estate Commission, I would imagine analyst. Um, there's nothing wrong with the real estate commission's air conditioner. All right, so what I would assume is uh, how many employees do you have now versus how many you're authorized for? And Money in the vacancy column would be to move you from where you are now up to your authorized amount. If that's too much or the clock, I will again have your director, Mr. Prater, reach out to Leanne to, to discuss that, like she mentioned. Okay. Is the vacancy amount directly from our budget request back in the session? No, I think we've I think we've we've uh, kind of hit on that. Um, but no, it was based on, and Leanne can probably speak better to this or, or somebody from Elbow, but it was based on what they thought it would take to get you from your position count or your head count on May 31st to your authorized amount in terms of headcount in your bill. And then how are the vacancies funded and what amount? That would be another question for Elbow. Um, Jennifer, like I said this morning, I'll call and talk to you. We, we've had some issue with corrections because of all the moving parts with the new prisons. Um, so we know we're probably going to have to work through the vacancies with y'all. Um, we would have funded them at probably the start, not what you're currently paying, like you asked me this morning, but I think you're going to have enough in your vacancy funding in order to cover that because there's no way you'll be able to fill all those positions. But you and I will talk about it. Yeah. Uh, can you touch on the overtime amount and what it is for? Um, 
the overtime okay. amount was money provided within your total salary that can be used to pay FLSA overtime. It's not it's a maximum you can get on not. overtime. It's just money that they provided in addition to whatever they appropriate you for salaries to cover some of your costs for overtime. Uh, I know Daniel is getting us the number uh, where we get the report on up-to-date headcount. So up-to-date headcount, um, you know, there's reports in Employee Central that will give you your, your headcount. Um, it's, I'm trying to choose my words carefully. It's not accurate not a hundred percent accurate is is probably a good way to do that um I, that that may be something we can publish on our website but again it's from a reporting standpoint i'm just counting heads it's it's to you to use a, a MMRS consultants lingo, it's not ideal. Um, and that's that's where we are with it. Um, we're going to do our best with it. Uh, but if we get to a point that the problem is, and, and a lot of you over the past 18 months have asked what happened to all the reports that used to be out there readily available through agency login on our website? When's that coming back? Um, if we ever get to a point with the reports from EC that we can trust as much as we trusted from SPARS, we will publish them. In SPARS, we knew those reports were right. In EC, we're still struggling to get accurate reports. And we don't want to publish something that you rely on that is not accurate. And so we're still working through that process um Shelly but uh right now we don't have the confidence to publish that on our website because it will be used as the end-all be-all and we don't necessarily have confidence in it right now as far as budget numbers I mean those updated once a month straight from transparency um and that's that's literally where we pull it from is transparency and so and that comes straight from the checkbook from uh, Magic Financials. So you can pull that at any time. It's just we publish it once a month, just the salary ca category. You can pull that at any time from transparency. Uh, Christy, I'm not going to publish these slides on our website, but I can get Abby to email, uh, email them out this afternoon so you'll have them. Thank you. That'd be helpful just for clarification if on the definition of how these th buckets of money work. Sure, sure. Thank you. All right, that catches me up on chat and I don't see any hands raised. All right, everybody. Well, I appreciate you hopping on on such short notice. I just I did not expect the chaos to ensue after yesterday when we passed the numbers out. And so probably should have scheduled this to begin with. It just uh, didn't think about it. So appreciate y'all joining us on such short notice. Um, if y'all need anything, uh, let me know. Um, and uh, We'll go from there. Email is probably best. Um, I can't talk to all 123 of you at once. So start with your analysts, but we're, we're, they're working through it too. It, it, it's we're all working through it. Um, so if you need anything, just let us know. All right. All right. Thank you all.